Right, welcome back. You're still watching uh, our program on radical economic transformation, what it means, what your thoughts are. When the president talked about it in his State of the Nation address, what did you understand by what he was saying and uh, what are your expectations? I'm going to start looking at your Twitter feeds in a short while because we have a studio audience here and also a panel that are helping us unpack this. And just before the break, you were talking about it's a pity government hasn't done this. You were talking about the things that uh, uh, we need to convince minister of. It seems to me the policies are there. I'm going to read a presidential statement here. Uh, and it, to me, sounds like radical needs, things need to be done. Uh, the youth of our country are the valued possession of the nation. Without them, there can be no future. Their needs are immense and urgent. And this president goes on to say that um, all of us need to take this on board. The objectives of the reconstruction and development program will not be realized unless we see in visible practical terms the condition of women in particular in our country has radically changed for the better. That was Nelson Mandela, 25th of May, 1994. So what are we saying? If he said that it was radical changes required in 1994, in 1955, we had the Freedom Charter, and they talked about land must be shared by all that work on it. Is, that was radical economic transformation for me as I read that particular document. What has gone wrong or why hasn't it happened? Is it that we can't trust government with policies that they came up with? Yeah, two, uh, two, two things happened. I think on the land, the issue was the constitution. Section 25 is actually a very uh, cumbersome section in the constitution because uh, firstly, it, if, you, if you read the rest of the section, it even gives the date in which uh, the restitution must uh, start and stop, and which is a problem because it has a date of 1913, when in fact most of the land disposition happened much earlier in the 1700s. So until that date changes, nothing in this legislation is going to make anything. So I'm saying to whoever is working on the land issue, as long as you have not changed Section 25 in the Constitution, we are just simply playing games, uh, as it were. must change that section. Uh, and deal with it properly, and it must reflect the intentions of the Freedom Charter. That's the first thing. The second point is that there's this thing that the ANC has got good policies, the problem is implementation. I have a different perspective. I think the problem we have is that indeed we have good ANC policies. The problem is when we change ANC policies into legislation, our legislation is not empowering. Triple PFA, for instance, continues to uh, help white monopoly capital. Uh, as it were. Uh, it, it, it continues to recognize price and you cannot compete mm -hmm. with, we keep making this point that it doesn't matter uh, whether you've got an ego as a black person, with your ego you cannot compete mm -hmm. with an established white monopoly capital, they've got economies of scale, they've got everything going in their favor. So you're saying we law. can't trust ANC MPs because they're the ones writing this legislation? I'm saying the current legislation is not empowering, number one. Whether it, there's another construction one again, I just forgot his name, I know it very well. I've yeah. just got a, a mental But who's block. stopping you? This is what I'm trying to get at. The no, the problem that is stopping it is because of the, uh, uh, the various uh, international arrangements that we have. This okay. is a problem. The international arrangements are keeping South Africa from growing. Uh, because whatever you do, you're not an island. You've got to do something that must get an okay globally. Now, it's those kinds of multilateral arrangements that you need to keep to that are a problem. Okay. So one hopes that uh, with the roadshow that uh, Minister of Finance is doing begins to tell those markets that uh, this thing is not sustainable. We cannot continue this way okay. uh, and so on because uh, it's just not working. All right. what, what, what we have now in South Africa is an economic framework that is colonialist, that continues to create a nanny state, that continues okay. to ensure that uh, the people are All on right. the margins. Chris, are we at the mercy of international economies? The president actually even said that there are people that are trying to take over our country and uh, using proxies. Well, no country in the world exists as an island. Okay. Um, 
just, uh, it's all very well to say we reject the rest of the world, but we, we cannot match the rest of the world in the resources in terms of research and development, the technological creation that happens externally. We cannot match that to say, okay, we don't need it. So it's one of the reasons we need foreign investment, because with that investment comes technology and uh, skills and expertise transfer that we cannot generate internally just by ourselves. Okay, it's an extremely important thing, and we can't sit here and, and listen to, um, how can you say, a hard radical uh, chatter, and then we use our cell phones and we go in our cars, etc., and we use the technology that comes from outside without batting an, an, an eyelid. Uh, eyelid. We've, we, we've got to actually have that, um, because we don't have a plan B. We have to actually build more of our own capital, right, so that we are capital surplus. That's why I say we need to change the, the tax laws. But I also think we need to, to do a little bit of economics here um, in terms of the level of jobs uh, and affluence and wages and that, that, that we, we're having. We've got a massive unemployment problem. If you raise wages, we're talking about, say, a minimum wage, all right, and and that's the only variable you shift. You will uh, lose jobs. Okay? That, that is an economic fact of life. Okay? However, you, you can appreciate if you produce 80 rands worth of value, you can't be paid 120 rand. Okay? And so if you add productivity, and it's an important aspect is to have productivity growth, mm. you can actually get job growth and wage growth and an improvement of affluence. Right? That's what's not normally spoken about um, in, 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 in economics because it's, you know, most people want to talk in two dimensions, as it were. And that's, that's why it's important to, to actually look at okay. that, that we actually do have that, that, that upliftment that takes All place right. of people <laughs> in employment but also... Uh, people need to actually, when they get a job, build savings so that they've got the choice when they've got more experience to actually say, make a choice to start their okay. own business. That. All right, let me go to the floor quickly. Policy Piri is on table number five. Yep. Good morning to you, Peter, and everyone else. Um, there's a saying that goes like uh, young people or black people are lazy, you know? I come from the townships in Soweto, to be specific. There's a lot of entrepreneurs there. They, they go, there are so many red tapes that prevents them from being uh, dominating in the, in, the, in the economy or the sectors that they are in. You will find a person uh, developing uh, her product, but when they have to be approved, it's a process. And who, who come up with those policies to say a certain thing need to be in a certain way so that it can get to the shelves? Even if they do go accordingly to all those procedures and at the end of the day, they, 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 are quite, they have a perfect relaxer. Who's, who, they, how many relaxers are at the counters at pick and pay or at Woolworths and so forth? And how many are internationally in our shelves? So that's not empowering our economy at all. We need to start being uh, patriotic and start supporting our own things, being lo locally proud. So now, if you want to have change, you need to talk to us, not at us. You know, you need to involve us because we are here, we are young, and we have innovative ways. Now, if you start telling us, for an example, with this 90 local percent thing, Saudi came and made a local 90 percent. It made a whole lot of sense to us as a, in a creative sector because young people and black people will be benefiting a whole lot of money. Billions were going outside of this country for so many years. And now that black people need to reap from the independent record labels, this 90 percent has been taken away now. It's been reviewed again. What are you saying? Are we good enough just to smoke near our pairs or just to be workers? somewhere else. Are you saying black products are not good enough for this country? So the only international things need to be sold. That's my question. Okay. All right. I'm going to take two more questions and then a quick break so you can make mental notes and your responses. Adrian Richards, table number four, if you can be quick with your point. Hi, Peter. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Great. I think uh, we need to Go back to what Chris says. It's, it's got a trickle from the top down. We haven't transformed in the top echelons in business. Let's just talk about one of the monopolies, the banks. The banks have 
hundreds of branches. From an employment equity level, they look good on paper. But let's talk in the wealth businesses, the investment uh, levels, 90% white dominated. I think the question needs to be asked, where do we start transformation? And it, it should have happened 24 years ago, from the top down, not from the bottom up. Okay, thank you very much. And Monk Mlangen is on table number 10. Thank you very much and good morning to you all. <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm also worried why people are afraid of uh, this radical economic change. In simple terms, we have it in our uh, Freedom Charter that talks to uh, that uh, all shall be shared in the country's wealth. Thank you very much. Hang on, before you sit down, when you say we are afraid, <coughs> who's afraid and who's stopping it? You, you, you know, Peter, I think whites are afraid of this uh, transformation because they know that they're defending uh, the inter their, their own interests. So are you saying white people are stopping transformation? That's correct, 100% correct. Okay, Thank you. all right. Okay, we'll take a quick break and after the break, we'll get an answer on that.